Thank you guys for joining me. Appreciate it. Welcome to the live stream. Live everywhere. live everywhere now. If you're new to the live stream, especially Instagram, we've been doing this over on YouTube and Facebook for the last month or so. So welcome. Thought we'd uh, try and complicate things by adding another platform because 
Come on, Wakuga. So we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We do a little painting today. So welcome, and hope you enjoy. Any questions you have, fire them through. Ben says he's not here. <laughs> appreciate Ben showing up. Leslie says, uh, love your work. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jesse says, love your art from Instagram. Hey, thanks, Jesse, from Instagram. Appreciate James it. Owens. Who? James Owens. Oh, James Owens too. Everyone's here. What's going on, James? Appreciate everybody coming out, having a good time here, just uh, expanding the live stream to include Instagram. So, like I said, we're going to try and complicate things and see if we can get things to blow up faster. JP says cheers from Costa Rica. Thank you, JP from Costa Rica, hanging in. Pierre's Adventures says love your work. Pierre's Adventures, thank you, man. Appreciate you hanging out. So we're bouncing around. If you've been following the live streams, we've been kind of bouncing around times and days. So we're just trying to find something that works for everybody that, you know, isn't the presidential debates. We learned not to stream during that. <laughs> so we're just trying different times and bouncing around. So again, appreciate you guys uh, putting up with this while we figure it all out. Uh, Armando asks where you get your inspiration from. So Armando's asking where I get my inspiration from. So. Basically, everything of mine starts with Day of the Dead, that idea of remembrance. And that's kind of where it starts there and expands to different cultures, different moments in time. And really, the core, though, the colors, the pageantry, the, the skeletal line work is all driven by Day of the Dead. And then when it comes to different genres, I'm, I'm just inspired by so many different, you know, whether it be nautical, Western, military, all these different genres I like to paint. You know, basically, just kind of a book of ideas and I just try and get to as many as I can before I'm dead. Thanks, Dominique. Appreciate it. Mike Rosley says you have amazing paintings. Thank you, Mike, for joining in. And Cameron says, wow. <laughs> wow to you too, Cameron. Appreciate it. So, um, Instagram question. Um, love it. Sucks you can't be in downtown Disney in September. So, Instagram question about uh, loves the work, but I can't be in downtown Disney. It's a bummer. Um, yeah, the Wonderground is closed now, and that's where I did my artist in residence every uh, September for the last eight years. So, it's a... It's a huge bummer to miss that. That was a big part of our our September. It was our September for so long. So it's a real bummer to, to not have that now. And, and again, I hope it comes back in the future. I, I, I don't I don't have high expectations for it too, but um, I do miss that. I love interacting with everybody and seeing everybody there. And you know, being there so long it was like a family. You know, over the years, people coming by, vacation, seeing them every year they came. So it's a real bummer to miss that. And I hope to. Uh, Hope to get back there again in the future, some other capacity. And that was another reason why we kind of saw the live streams as, as a, a way to kind of reach out and, and capture some of those interactions that I miss not being able to talk to people, so not be able to share the work. So, again, I appreciate you guys tuning in here and hanging out, and hopefully we can capture some of that same magic. I can't, on the overhead, I really can't see mm -hmm. where you're at. So I don't know if no, can't do much until my hand moves from there. Let me get this part done. Kim from Las Cruces, New Mexico, so she loves the work. Thank you, Kim from Las Cruces. And Armando asks, um, is there any chance of tattooing? So Armando's asking, any chance of tattooing? Do you mean blood or all related items? So there'll be no chance of me tattooing. But all the work does get tattooed. I have you know, desktop full of, the folder full of just hundreds um, over the years. So it's just always amazing to see. So now I tell anybody they want to get anything tattooed, feel free. Just... Um, Send me a picture so I can check it out afterwards. Tammy says uh, she's in love with your art. Thank you, Tammy. Appreciate it. And uh, Jesse on Instagram, have you ever done any graphic work using uh, Cintiq or something like that? And Jesse, is yes. a question. So Jesse's asking if I've done any, any any graphic work um, with Cintiq, and yes, I have. I'm actually a graphic designer by trade. Um, I was a graphic designer for up to about ten years ago when I went full time art. But yes, I use Photoshop and Illustrator since they were like. Photoshop one I'm using those programs and, and InDesign and all that stuff for most of my adult life. So, um, and it's super helpful for an artist too, because I do image work. I was just um, editing video before this started, um, this live stream. So it, I find all that work is still very important to what I do for making banners to, uh, pre-pressing images, 
getting color correct, you know, all that kind of stuff is still very actively involved in the graphics programs. Um, Costa Rica, JP is asking, will this be sold once it's finished? So JP is asking, will this be sold when it's finished? This is actually a commission, so this is already sold. Um, but there will be prints available and, and all the canvas paper sizes and such once it's uh, scanned in and finished. Um, Ruth Sark said you study your art at my school and, and really enjoyed it and I love the Adele Tacos. Well, thank you, Ruth. I'm so excited that you guys are checking out my work at school. It's always amazing to me. I never got to study any cool artists that were alive. All the ones I ever studied were dead. So I'm, uh, I'm thrilled that you guys were able to see the artwork and I, I always love when classes reach out and I can talk to them and, and speak to them and talk about the art. So I appreciate you guys uh, letting me be part of your curriculum. Armando's asking what the name of the piece is. Do you have a name? So we don't, I'm not releasing the name yet because it's part of the commission and we just want to keep it all secret because some of the aspects, just we have to keep some parts secret right now. So we, everything will be released when it's, um, when you see the prints and everything, it'll have its name and be all ready to go. But it's a commission, and we're just keeping some parts secret until the, um, it's delivered. Um, so, Pierre, on Instagram, it said their son's room is all decorated in your art. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Pierre. That's so cool, and I hope it isn't nightmares. That's so great. I mean, I, God, I think the, the stuff that was up in my room as a kid, so that, that's amazing to me. That's just completely humbling, and I really appreciate you sharing that. Lady Mac on Instagram is happy that she caught this live. Excellent, Lady Mac. Welcome to the feed on Instagram. Yeah, it's our first um, live feed here in a long time. We've been over there on, uh, on Facebook and YouTube. So I encourage you, if you missed the live feed here and you want to see it, you can always go back and check it out um, on YouTube, my channel, with all my other videos. But we're going to try and add an Instagram to the, uh, to the mix. I'm hoping that it stays up and we don't have any issues. So uh, again, thank you guys for joining us. And we're really excited to add this to the feed. I feel like you guys were missing out. Ben says, have you, have you ever gone to talk to a school? And if so, were they annoying? Uh, Ben's asking, have you ever been, <laughs> been to talk to a school? And were they annoying? Well, um, I was annoying because I'm an old man. And being in the school talking to kids made me realize how old I am. They didn't, they, again, great conversations about the art, but man, it just made me feel like I was 150 years old. Are you going to be doing the Liberty Station art walk? question is, am I doing Liberty Station Art Walk, which is in downtown San Diego? And I am not. I'm actually, um, right now, all my shows are canceled. All my events are canceled. So I am fully retired from festivals. I've actually gotten rid of my trailer, getting rid of my stuff. My next show booked was Comic-Con in um, 2021. Uh, 20, and I believe they're about to cancel that too. I would not be surprised one bit. So I am done with festivals and done with shows. Um, I'll still be doing live demos once um, things cool down a little bit. So you can you'll be able to check me out somewhere. Uh, might be at SEMA again, those kind of shows there. So as of right now, though, we are off the road and festival free. Again, that was kind of reason to, I, I started my whole career. I've been on the road doing shows and festivals and painting in front of people. So the idea was for the live stream was great because I felt like I could bring everybody back in and let them see what. I appreciate everybody joining and everybody hanging out too. So. If you're just new to the stream or new to the painting here, so what you're seeing is I'm putting in the enamel, and this is really the last stage of the painting. Um, all the color you see here, all the characters, that's gouache. It's like an opaque watercolor. So I've already gone in and done all the layering and colors and, and shadows and built up the values. And basically at this stage now, I'm going in and I'm just basically carving out all the details, all the nooks and crannies. For me, this is the most fun part. This is where everything gets kind of comes together. Um, what's the earliest painting you can Tony Duke on Instagram is a great question. What's the earliest painting I remember? Um, you know, I, as a kid, I always drew on desks and books and, and got in trouble and doing that kind of stuff. Always drawing. Um, I think the earliest, boy, the earliest stuff. I remember my earliest painting, um, like basically college kind of painting. I don't remember any, I mean, kid drawing, tons of stuff before that. I and mean, I was in high school. I, I drew in high school and, and had won some awards for pen and ink and weird stuff that I'd done at that point. So I was always an artsy fartsy kid, you know, doing that kind of work and drawing and, and, and painting and that kind of stuff. So, but um, I remember, let's see, the earliest painting. Let's go with the first painting I sold. That's kind of an easier one. So that was back in probably 2003, maybe 2002. Um, probably about seven years after I finished college, and um, I just kind of started playing with paints again. 
So if you look at my went to my website right now, I can tell you the oldest painting on the website is, I believe, the green octopus, yeah. underwater curiosity. So it's a big green octopus, and that's probably the oldest piece on my website. And that piece is, I want to say, 2008, nine, right in there somewhere. So, and you can see some of the style changes as it, you know, I mean, that was, it's been almost 300 paintings since then. So things really change and evolve. Andy Guffin saying awesome work as usual. Good to see you work again. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Cameron is asking, do you always prefer um, to do your core outlines in pure black or do you play with other colors? For one? So oh, in the video, it may look like pure black, but it actually is never pure black. What was the name again? Cameron, great question. So the it's not actually pure black; it's a dark red. Um, it's, I always use a dark tone of the background color. Um, again, it looks that way because of the you know the the video feed. But it is actually a, a dark red, and I like to use. I never use black because black tends to flatten it out, it makes it look like a, a sticker almost. So I always use a dark tone of the background, and that really kind of gives it some some just uh, good word for it. just it kind of links to it. If I was to do this in all black, you really would see the difference. It would just feel a little different. It would feel not as connected to the background as, you know, when I use this color, it makes it clearly, you know, relates to it and, and, and attaches itself to it. If that makes sense. Manuel Chavez over on Instagram says, I have a love, trust, and revolver, and I love it. Thanks. Hey, thank you, Manuel. Appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out on Instagram. Thrilled you guys are coming over. That's excellent. I'm just really excited we were able to get that to work. So we'll probably be doing adding you guys to the uh, to the stream and keeping you guys in the loop. We've been doing these over on uh, Facebook and, and YouTube, so I'm excited to be able to add you guys to it. Do you have a favorite theme to draw or paint other than Meet Dave the Ooh, good question. Favorite theme to draw or paint? Oh, that's a tough one. You know, it's, it was all kind of Day of the Dead, but I think that I love to do um, mechanical stuff. Um, usually old mechanical stuff, you know, old tanks, old, old cars, you know, trains, things are, you know, very old, mechanical, riveted, that kind of stuff. I just love the, the challenge that that presents itself. Um, I just love that style of machinery, um, old World War II planes, that kind of stuff. I really enjoy the challenge that those offer. Shutters McFly over on Instagram says, love the new art. <laughs> Thanks, Shutters. Appreciate it. Jim over on Instagram says, hi from France. Hey, thanks. Is Jim from France? Jim. Jim from France. Appreciate it. Thanks for, for tuning in. Instagram is hopping. Well, I apologize for not letting you guys in and not sharing the stream with you for so long. Um, the effing dude on Instagram <laughs> says, hey, Dave, uh, Jay Fiore here. When you get up to visit Miramac again, and I wanted to know if I could get a, one of your pieces tattooed. Excellent. Hometown Merrimack chiming in. And Jay, you can get tattooed anytime you want. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you asking. Go get it done. And make sure you send me a pic so I can see it afterwards. Uh, Instagram. Uh, steampunk theme would be nice to see. Mm, yes. Yeah, we haven't done any steampunk stuff yet. So that's definitely definitely in the, in the, uh, the loop for sure to, to try something like that. Ben is asking, have you ever put your hand in wet paint and ruined the painting? Ben's asking, has I ever put my hand in wet paint and ruined the painting? Um, I have definitely put my hand in wet paint, um, but I am very good at fixing. It's all, it's all professional. It's the only difference in professional is just being able to fix the mistakes you make. So yes, I've put my hand in there and I've always been able to save it. So far. So far. If I mess up tonight, I'm gonna blame you. Angela. Thank you, Angela. I'm thrilled the whole family enjoys the artwork. I love hearing that. You know, I think about my family is how many things we could ever agree on, not even a TV channel. I can't imagine agreeing on art too, but that's so awesome. I appreciate you guys uh, hitting the gallery and checking out the work and I joining the stream here. Craig pops in with the insult. Over 300 paintings in 17 years. You sure are old. Yep. <laughs> it's like a comedy show, this stream sometimes. Yep, one foot in the grave. Yes, one foot in the grave. 
I will die not having finished all the pieces I want to finish. So supportive. Now just pick one, but Cameron asks, what's your favorite scary movie? Oh, man. Mm. Favorite scary movie, The Thing. Mm. Now, that's kind of sci-fi, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that that doesn't count. And I'm going to go, um, I am a firm believer in uh, The Exorcist freaked me out as a kid. And Salem's Lot freaked me out as a kid. What would um, the average price of a commission be? So average price of a commission, great question. Someone's asking what the average price of a commission would be. So commissions start at 3000 And basically that's for around an 18 by 24 piece. And it go, um, goes up from there based on you know, the size gets bigger. And there's also custom framing options too. But um, commissions start at, at 3500 And that's just because of my schedule. I don't do a lot of them. Um, this, this, this one has been booked for, you know, geez, almost a year. Um, so it's kind of just the way the schedule works. And then that's, that's the, the, the price point and that's the size and we kind of work with. That was a stupid line to make because now I can't get over to the hand. What painting has been the longest and most painstaking? Oh, so the longest painting. Um, so that by far... Let's see, was, did, we, did we say that Rum Runner was longer than, than uh, Last Call? So. I don't think so. So the, the, the longest one by far is The Last Call. Um, and that piece features, um, it's a bar scene, and it features references to 13 different paintings I did in the past. Different characters from those paintings are in, the, in it. Um, it's really a collection of all those kind of pieces. And it's a huge bar scene, and it's full enamel. When I say full enamel, it means that I... If you look at this here, right here, there's no enamel going to go in the background here. Rarity that is that busy of a scene. I mean, the piece itself was was almost um, six feet long, so it was a huge piece. It took um, well over 100 hours. Um, it was basically two festivals because I, I live paint at festivals. It was two festivals plus studio time. It was just a massive painting. It was so much fun to do. It's one of those paintings that you, I, I love doing huge things. If you follow me, um, about three or four months ago, you saw me do a huge Rum Runners Resort. That piece is also about five feet tall. Um, I, I love epic pieces like that. Just to work on something that long and bits and pieces and kind of, you know, knock it out is I just, I love it. This is a really fun experience and I love the epic pieces like that. Um, Dan was asking, so he just saw that you said the enamel isn't actually black because he had no clue. Yes. So the Dan, so the enamel is not, is not black. Again, it looks like that. It kind of shows up in all the, uh, all the graphics like that. But yes, it's always a dark color of the background. Pierre is saying um, they're in South Africa. How would they get a piece to them? So Pierre's asking, how would he get a piece in South Africa? So I would just ship it to you. If, are you looking for canvases, paper, like a prints, or are you looking for like an original? Because I've shipped... Well, this is going to England. Yeah, this, this is actually going to England. Um, we've shipped everything all over the place. You know, so we've, I have paintings in um, Costa Rica. We have paintings all over. So there's always a way to get things in Dubai. We have pieces that have gone the whole stretch of the world. So we can always get something to somebody. We've, uh, even with, with COVID, we've had a challenge. We've had things <laughs> stuck in quarantine for a couple months. A couple of uh, originals on the way to Australia. Took, us, took some time off <laughs> and, and hung out for a while. But they always end up getting there. The question is, am I using one shot? Yes, I am. That is my favorite enamel. I've used that from uh, from the day I discovered enamel. Armando is asking, when you paint, do you listen to any particular music or artist? So Armando's asking if I listen to music um, when I paint. Yes, obviously on the live stream you can't because of uh, licensing issues. But yes, I always listen to uh, music or, um, <laughs> it goes back to the movie question, or movies i like to um put movies on i've seen a hundred times so that i don't look at them when i'm pa when i'm painting that way i can just kind of stay focused i'm very easy to distract um i can play with my phone and lose hours so this way i try and watch things i've seen a bunch of times but um yes often music but probably more often old crappy movies crappy everybody else i love them you know this last week it was uh, escape from new york and escape from la just because that's a terrible movie but you gotta watch both together um, I think I also even threw in um, an old Boris Karloff mummy movie. I think the, I'm not sure which one it, which one it was, but threw one of those in too because it's the time of season. So yes, yes, and yes. Do you change the color of your enamel based on the background or is it always dark red? 
the question is, do I change the enamel based on the color of my background or is it always dark red? Yes, I always change it to be a dark tone um, of the piece. So if you look at the piece I just posted a few days ago, um, the Together Forever. So if you look at that piece, that's a dark purple in the background because the, the background tones have the purple in them. So it's always a, a dark tone of that. It's really one of those things you can't really even see unless you get right up on them, uh, the originals. Like, you know, if you saw them at a show, you, that's where you can really see the difference. Otherwise, you don't really get to see them. The prints kind of hide it, too. You don't really even see that that color variation is there. Gloss and Guns on Instagram says, I first found you and your work at the Art Festival in Nevada, and I have five pieces of yours now. I like the war ones. <laughs> well, thank you, Gloss and Guns. Who thought you would like the war ones? <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm thrilled you caught us at Boulder City. Another show we'll miss not being at, but I appreciate you uh, checking out the stream and still following the art. On Instagram, um, question, why does one shot not stick to Rust-Oleum spray paint? Great question. So why does one shot not stick to Rust-Oleum spray paint? So the challenge with one shot is that it is oil-based and it uses, um, Rust-Oleum uses, it has catalysts inside of the paint. And what those catalysts do is they basically activate the paint when it sprays out to, they activate to start drying. So that catalyst reacts with one shot because it's an oil chemical base kind of thing. Um, so you can't paint over um, spray paint unless, it's, unless it has been dry for a long time. If it's been dry for a long time, you know, like a couple months, you'll be fine. But if it's been recently fresh, it will not, it'll, you can always get it crinkling. It won't be happy. So it's one of those things that you have to test out uh, before you do it to make sure that you don't have a reactive surface. Um, also, you can't just spray clear coat on top of this, on top of a uh, one shot, or else it would also just crinkle. So that is a, is a, it is a fickle beast to deal with, no doubt. Well, Cameron is saying about the music question, um, do you play music relevant to the work, or do you have any particular artists you like to work with? Uh, great question. Do I play music relevant to the work I'm doing? You know, I... While I do that on the live stream and I get excited to pick out songs that match it, I don't do that in real life often. I don't, you know, I don't think about that when I when I paint. I think I, I just go into my my zone and I kind of pick things that I listen to a lot. Um, for music, yes, I mean I have I have I'm very eclectic mix. I'm definitely uh, acoustic folky kind of you know that that mix is probably definitely what you would call my stuff. Um, the house has criticized it as piratey because there's a lot of a uh, Probably a lot of accordion in there, <laughs> you know, flogging Molly and that kind of stuff has a lot of that kind of mix in there. Um, the sort of punk stuff, you know, no effects, social distortion, that kind of thing, which I, did, I love and that pretty much uh, powers the studio. It's funny, I grew up on the East Coast and, you know, I listened to social distortion and thought I was special. And then I moved to Southern California where it's just like they hand you a CD when you cross the border. So I realized I wasn't as cool as I thought I was. Armando is saying he's an R R N E R nurse in El Paso. Any chance you'll make a nurse painting? We'd love to see a male nurse, um, you know, especially during this time of COVID. Yes. Well, first off, first, thank you for, for being out there and doing what you do. And we have not done a nurse piece. And, you know, and, and thank you for reminding me of male nurse, too, because we need to... I'm not a serious one of those yet, a first responders piece at all. So it's definitely in, kind of in my mind in the works to try and find a way to do that. Um, the challenge with that kind of piece, though, is that while you get what it is in and the, and the skeletons, um, doing a piece like that can, can have uh, negative repercussions for people who don't know the artwork and why there's skeletons involved. So it's one of those things I'm always very conscious of when I do those kind of pieces, and, you know, that there can be backlash. I got to make sure that, you know, have a good design and come up with a good idea and, and think about it for a while. But it's a great idea, and it's one of those ones that has to get done eventually. Well, here I go, and I'm so far away from her face now, and I keep putting things in the way. Again, great questions, guys. I really appreciate everybody hanging out and joining the stream. The question is, do I ever use Krylon spray paint? Um, I've used spray paint for some backgrounds and some bigger pieces in the past. Um, I don't use them anymore um, for most of my paintings. Um, just messy to work with that kind of thing, but there's no, uh, I have no reason besides that. 
Um, I prefer the background here is done with acrylics. I just prefer, one, I do them inside, and it makes it a lot easier because you can't spray paint inside. I have, I have a workshop, but I just, I prefer working in here. So basically one of those things I just, I like the control and the variation I can get with the acrylics and the ability to remove some things. Excuse me. If you go to my site though, um, there's a samurai piece called uh, Way of the Warrior. Um, it's a samurai on horseback. And that piece um, has an all spray paint background for little tidbits. Jody Heath just got here. What did I miss? <laughs> Jody Heath, where were you? Why were you not watching the stream? Come on now. All right, let's get up there to her face and the hair, because that's fun stuff. You know, I, mean, I can't see my thing. What brand of acrylics do you like? So the question is, what brand of acrylics do I like? So I prefer to use Holbein um, acrylics. Um, and the reason I enjoy that is that is it's, it's just, the pigmentation is so heavy um, meaning it's just if you use like a, a liquitex basics which i used for years when i was learning to paint nothing wrong with that at all still use it occasionally for big coverage um, but it's a very plasticky feeling acrylic you know you can add water to it and it kind of just like the water sits next to it like it's oil and water um, they don't mix that well it's just a plasticky feel um, which is an educational grade paint um, what I love about the whole bean stuff is that it's just it's so pigmented that I, I mixed water with it it's just so rich and the colors are so vibrant and it just it just takes to water-based um, media really well and just really become my favorite so I use um, whole bean acrylics and whole beans gouache I really enjoy their gouache um, their acrylic gouache is my favorite and I use that um, exclusively I'm not a, a snob. I'll try any products. Those are just the ones that I enjoy that work the best. Okay, I'm going to try and not block the camera here, but i got to get in there to her face. And I'm sure they've already been on camera, but also the shipping department is here with me. So I appreciate... Uh... Yeah, that was the shipping department there. Luis <laughs> Jimenez is uh, super dope. <laughs> All right, getting a pedicure. I'm probably more important than a pedicure, but that's fine. That's fine. Rebecca says, yay, my favorite artist. Well, thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate you joining the stream. Welcome. Very interesting. Cameron says, your line work somewhat reminds me of Kim Jong-ji. Although your work is more controlled and crafty, this is very sketchy and loose. Do you happen to follow his work? Ah, Kim Jong-ji. I love his work. He is just a mutant. Um, his ability, I have all of his sketchbooks here. I, I've um, gotten to meet him in person, gone to some of his, his lectures and demos. He's just a, I'm, I'm again, a mutant human being, amazing skill. Um, the ability to know what he's gonna paint so far in, his, in advance. I mean, he just I, makes me wanna throw my stuff away. He is amazingly talented. Um, he's just, again, a brain just wired differently than mine. Um, I encourage you guys to check out his work. He does huge, uh, almost mural size works intricately intricate scenes just and there's no pre-drawing it's just out of his head you know it's and it's just beautiful the amount of detail and stuff he gets in there the perspectives yeah he's a definitely one of my uh favorite contemporary artists for sure and i love the comparison because i think he's amazing um gloria says new here first time watching love the interaction someone mentioned a tattoo is that something you've done for people Hey, Gloria, thank you, and welcome to the stream. Appreciate you checking out the art. First-time listener, first-time watcher. Um, so, uh, yes, anyone who wants to get work tattooed of existing work, by all means. Um, unfortunately, I do not have any time in my schedule to do tattoo sketches anymore. Um, I only do commission paintings. But if there's something that you like that's already been done, by all means, grab it and go get tattooed. And just send me a picture so I can check it out after. Hey, thanks, Gavin. Gavin's going for the Farthest Away Award tonight. Appreciate you checking out the stream. Glad I can power your work. Yeah, it's... And Jody missed it, but she was asking if this one has a name, so not quite. Not quite, Jody. We're holding off because it is a commission, so we're not doing, releasing the name or anything until it's been delivered. She says, will you ever do a painting of the shipping department? The Batfrog Bunny Pig would be a great one. 
Well, they already do a painting of the shipping yard, and you know they'll they'll definitely get the, worked into there. There's a uh, there's one picture of the uh, the previous shipping department in the hallway, desperately needing some compatriots. So I'm sure that'll happen. Psst. Hey, Rippy. Speaking of, shipping department is going to town looking their butt over there. So I had to. Sorry, streamers. That kind of stream. Sir, some tattoo on Instagram says I tattooed your work on one of my best mates about six to seven years ago. I'll give you off a picture. <laughs> Excellent. What was the name? Um, Sir, some tattoo. Sir, some tattoo. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, for tattooing it. Hope you did a great job. I'm gonna critique it. Send it over. <laughs> but no, but thank you for checking out the stream and following the work. Still, it's amazing the, tat the tattoo, the amount that's out there that people come in with. Um, I have a friend, he's, he tattoos, he was in the Midwest, I don't know where he's at now, but he, he's a friend of mine, we've been to um, art jams before, and he called me one day and he's like, okay, I don't know what to say anymore, you know, like people keep coming in, they found your work online, don't even know it's you sometimes, but they found the work and they want it tattooed, and I don't know, what, am I telling them no, am I, what, what do I do, and I'm like, you know, if, if they love the work and they're not moved for a tattoo, by all means, I mean, it's flattering to have someone want that on their bodies the rest of their lives. So it's, it's one of those weird things where I wonder how many are out there, <laughs> you know? I've been mean, at shows where someone will come in with a bot, you know, arm sleeves and we have a couple of body suits I know of out there and it's incredibly flattering and just really amazing. And I encourage you uh, to put me in your will and send me your skin because I do collect weird stuff. And I think of, you should ask that. You know, and I've, I'm sorry, I've been told not to ask for people's skin. Apparently that's weird. So apparently I don't, can't get skin, so never mind. Never mind. Only because of COVID, right? Not because it's weird. Any other reason? Jody's saying she has the um, the Paros and Magatos. Were those done at Disney? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Paros and so Jody's asking um, where the Paros and Gatos paintings I did were. From. And yes, they were at, at Disney. A lot of my cues have the uh, We Just Fit, which is one of my uh, most collected pieces. Um, the cute little couple with the puzzle pieces, that's from, um, was from Disney also. My residency there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bummer to not, to not be there and we're definitely gonna miss it. You can get to do Star Wars pieces, licensed Disney images. It was some fun, some fun memories from that that time. So hope that will come around in some way again. Here comes the boxer. Or kind of you know adding some shadows, some tone to kind of give it some thickness. Kind of start carving it all out. Yeah, shipping department is needing help. Captain Keel Green from Instagram. I have a lot of your work on my walls. Thank you, Captain. Appreciate it. Pirate Hooker says they need to bring back the vinyl nation. Yes, we missed the vinyl nations. I missed doing those. That was always super exciting to get to do some sculpture stuff. I don't really have any room in my in my schedule for sculptures anymore, so I really missed that uh, getting to do those. Jody's asking, will you ever do another surfboard painting? Question is, will I ever do another surfboard painting? I would imagine so. Uh, the challenge with those is that they're you know they're they're big, they're difficult to photograph. 
But uh, I do uh, get a, a, a hankering every once in a while for some uh, to do some object painting stuff. So I would never say never. Chrissy Ross says loves watching you paint. Thanks, Chrissy. Appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out in the stream. I appreciate everybody kind of coming by. This is uh, a lot of fun for me. This is what I'd be doing anyways if you weren't here. So I appreciate you uh, keeping me company. Yeah. Teeth. Cameron says, side lesson, I'm learning how to be a personable artist <laughs> like you. <laughs> well, thank you. I think if you're going to be an artist, you should be personable. You should be welcoming. You should be able to talk about the art. And I mean, I'm a weird mutant, though, too. I can kind of talk and paint at the same time. I know that's a weird... Some artists look at me like, what are you doing? How does that even work? But um, I think a lot of practice. Yeah, I mean, I, I learned to paint doing, you know, professionally, you know, doing demos, doing shows, doing festivals, and, and being out there sharing the work. I love, you know, showing that the work is hand done. And not digital, so it's been an important part of my career to be out front painting. So uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to have my brain work that way. Here we go. Jody asking, do you think being a southpaw gives you an advantage? Ah, does oh. being a southpaw have an advantage? I'm going to tell you yes, no matter if it does it or not. <laughs> being left, everybody on partner. Yeah, you if you're not left-handed, you might as well just give up art altogether. <laughs> give, give everything, because if you're not left-handed, i got to say, why bother? So here's the funny part about being left-handed. Here's the, the challenge. Here's the, the struggle, and it is real. I don't care what you righties say, but um, like a sketch pad, I work backwards in a sketch pad, so the spiral is on the right-hand side, so that my hand doesn't sit on the ridge. Yeah, I can't read coffee mugs either, but I can deal with that. Um, Instagram, Josh and Janelle from from Arizona. They're bummed that uh, Fourth Ave has been canceled. They can't wait to get back to normal so we can see you guys. Definitely. Great to hear from you guys, Josh and Janelle. Miss you guys out there. Our Arizona troop. Yeah, it's weird not being out there and making that run. That's, you know, We did that for Arizona, Tucson, and Tempe for, I think, almost 10 years. We'd be kind of preparing. Yeah, we'd be getting ready to, to come out again. So it's uh, it's it's weird. It's, it's a bummer to not be uh, doing that. So, I'm, again, I'm thrilled you guys are hanging out with us right now and kind of capture some of the magic. Whitney says, please tell me prints are coming. Yes. <laughs> Sorry I joined late. <laughs> yeah, Whitney, prints are coming. This is a commission, so as soon as it's delivered, then the, yes, prints will be coming in all the sizes and shapes and all the stuff. Oh, she got her mermaid today. Oh, excellent. <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much. Giving the mermaid a home. You can't plot your next piece as you're still, <laughs> your other pieces showed up today. And this is this kind of fantasy we were talking about. This, this piece is very unique in my, you know, in the rest of my works and the way and the role it plays. I don't have anything really like this. I've done tons of dark religious stuff. It's one of my favorite things to paint. Speaking of, you know, I love that kind of artwork and and all of the, the iconography. Um, but this is kind of unique. It's a little more fantasy than I've done in the past. Um, I was just really inspired. I kind of, this piece kind of the idea kind of came to me, and I was just really excited that the. It worked out for the commission. You know, it's kind of what I saw in my head. So I'm excited to uh, to try something new and different. But it's definitely a subject that I haven't really done before in this kind of way. So it's definitely a, uh, a challenge and exciting challenge. Again, you got the devil in there. I am down. Armin 
Harmon D. M. Real on Instagram. Said your work is great. Hey, thanks, Harmon. Looks like um, maybe Brazil. Brazil. Hey. I'm not sure. Um, it's definitely Portuguese. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining me. Appreciate it. A lot of Brazil in the house tonight. Could be wrong. It's yeah, Portuguese. Portuguese. <laughs> a lot of Portuguese areas in the house tonight. Yeah. And one lonely New Zealander. And a lonely New Zealander. He said yes, so we got something right. Okay. <laughs> Portuguese. <laughs> Not, to Not to Brazil. Brazil. All right. If you have any more questions, feel free to fire them through. I always enjoy that. Whitney says this looks uh, kind of romantic. Whitney says it's kind of look romantic, and I definitely feel the same way. That was kind of my uh, little wooing action going on. Again, I love her dress. I was really excited, chance to paint something like that. I haven't done a dress scooped like that before. Excited for what those look like and things I've never painted before, you know, and I'll figure it out when I get there. Ah, tell us a little bit about the new addition to the shipping department. Ah, the new <laughs> the newest addition to the shipping department. Well uh, he's sound asleep in the middle right now. So his formal name of nah, the get over it. <laughs> No, that's important to the story. Regardless of his formal name, he's now abandoned his formal name to just be called Bunny. Because he's a little gray bunny and that's all he does is run around the house like a little bunny. So he is a French bulldog. And he is uh, crazy and fits right in. He's the, It was the best quarantine thing we did by far. Didn't know we were doing that until we actually got him a little bit before that. But I'm thrilled we did. And He's been a great addition to the shipping department. He also does nothing to help. So he fits right in. Bunny McBunnersons is pretty much uh, that and shithead. Affectionately though. He's the first little dog I've ever, ever had. So it's been a, a, a learning experience for for, uh, for that. I didn't know how that all worked. That's a thing. He can't open doors. Yeah, he can't open doors. So if you just tuned in now, this is the enamel stage. So I'm basically putting all the dark line work in, kind of capturing all the details. Um, all the colors are already down as gouache. It basically kind of captures all the, built up all the shadows and values now. And so now I'm kind of going in just all detail work. Just kind of capturing all the bits and pieces. Jody asks, will you be doing any more shirts or maybe bedding? Jody's asking, will I do any more shirts or bedding? Uh, bedding, I don't know. 
I have a bunch of licensing stuff um, that's kind of on hold, obviously, because situation, but that should be coming out later on. And there, I know there's those blankets in there that are now, I think you can find them just on Amazon searching my name. Um, T-shirts are definitely doing more shirts. We have a bunch of designs on my desk. I got to um, just get uploaded and get finished. So, yes. Trying to basically, when uh, does a, does I finish a painting, you know, if, if it's worthy of the shirts, get that as part of the project and get it uploaded right then. So I'm trying to be better at that. I love the light cast from the fire on her hair and the better back and all of this right here. That's really cool. I like it. I mean, I did it, so it should be cool, but I, but I, I do like it. Pretty graphic But again, thank you guys all for, for joining. I'm thrilled that the, uh, we'll be able to do Instagram and it stayed up. So we will definitely uh, try and keep you guys, you Instagrammers, in the uh, in the fold. We've been doing live streaming for again, almost a month now. So, And we had not done any to uh, Instagram, but we will try and uh, change that. Question, have you always had this much patience? <laughs> yeah, the question is, have I always had this much patience? Um, I don't know. I, it, it's a great question. I've, my art's always been, you know, I, I used to carve tiki's. They take forever. You know, I used to, um, graphic design work takes fairly long. And, you know, all but I guess maybe yes. Um, this definitely pushes that. This is my relaxation. This is my... You know, the Zen thing. This is kind of what I'd be doing to relax. Um, I look forward to this. I mean, some anxiety, obviously, to is that going to work? Is this going to work? How do I do that? But overall, it's really, you know, it's my relaxation. It's what I want to be doing. Oh, why are you going for it? I know. Well, that's where he is. So if, if we want to get him in the in this feed, then i got to get up there. I could just abandon him and we'll just continue with her. Oh, I don't know. This is, this is a nightmare. <laughs> um, Dan is saying, speaking of tiki, any sculpture stuff coming out soon? So Dan's asking any sculpture stuff coming out. So right now, there's no plans for any sculpture stuff. Um, that's not in the radar right now um, for any future stuff. Now that the... I used to always kind of combine the sculpting one with the Disney Vinylmations and with those kind of leaving... Uh, going away also i don't know how that will work in our schedule and as of right now there's no plans but again i i really enjoy sculpting so I, I hope that we can find a way to to bring that back in some way but as of right now there is no plans <laughs> Jody, he says, more evil can evil. Uh, all right. Your son has it all. We need more. <laughs> we will put that on the list. Gary's Instagram will drop us after an hour. He's used to it. I believe it is to the limit. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're on Instagram, um, it's going to dump us at the hour mark. So I appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, feel free to jump over to YouTube or uh, Facebook if you want to continue to watch. Uh, we'll be back again. We'll be doing more. Um, we're doing this every week. Not sure on times yet. We're still trying to figure that out, what works best. But uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in, and we're definitely going to do more of these. So I hope to see you guys on there again. You guys have been just great. I really appreciate all the questions and hanging out. Really, uh, better than better than I could hope for. 
Whitney's saying, what about more stationery or note cards? Whitney's asking about more stationery or note cards. So um, more mini prints, for sure. Note cards and stuff, uh, I, again, I, we have licensing stuff in the works that's kind of all on hold. So as of right now, I don't know of any stuff yet. Eva Rodriguez says, uh, simply amazing, stumbled upon your work a few months back and I've been in awe ever since. Hey, Dave Rodriguez, appreciate you coming over and hanging out and checking out the work. Thanks, man. Stoked you found it and you're hanging out. I'm gonna try and do this more. Haley, it's already been an hour. Mm -hmm. Eddie Cota says this is beautiful. Hey, thanks, Eddie. Appreciate it. Mm hmm. Thanks, Graziano. Appreciate it. Yeah, this is a fun. This is a fun piece. I'm excited to, uh, to get into this one more. You want to mention what's different about the lighting? On him? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the different in this piece is uh, lighting. I, I call it kind of a lighting effect. It's the uh, the cast light from his torch. You can see here all the oranges, and I pulled the oranges all over him, over the back of her hair. Um, I just I, I love the unique feel that gives. Um, you can see some of that in my most recent piece, The Plague Doctor. Um, I, I love lighting. I love to play with it like that, and it just gets me excited. And I think being able to capture that and use it in that way and toss it around is, is really fun. And this and The Plague Doctor piece was literally what kind of my reference for what I wanted to do with this one. So I am excited that it's... That, uh, I like it so far, and I think it's really working out in that way. I love the cast light. Whitney is saying, um, what about any more friendship themes? Whitney's asking any more friendship themes. You know, um, definitely. You know, that, that friendship, couples, I mean, Valentine's Day will be coming up soon, but Christmas is still coming up to you. All that stuff, for sure. Um, I, I don't think that far in advance. I have a bunch of smalls here, small canvas, um, small little frames that I'll be doing, and um, I have some sketches for those, but a lot don't have sketches yet. And I kind of sit down and, and the idea is literally right then for that framed piece because they match in size. You know, I just, I designed the pieces for the little frame. So those are all kind of out of my head, whatever pops in. So yes, I would definitely imagine that those will sneak in. Love, couple, friendship. That's all, you know, little animals. Those are always going to work their way in. Patricia says, so happy you're doing these. We miss watching you painting at 4th Ave Street. Oh, thank Trisha. Does Trisha. Trisha? Thanks, Trisha. I appreciate it. Watching us at the Fourth Ave Street Fair. Yes, this is this is the replacement now. So there's no kettle corn, but it's not a thousand degrees either. So you can hang out with us. But again, I appreciate you uh, you coming by. This is the new street fair. Mm -hmm. Any children's books? Uh, any, any children's books? You know, no plans yet. One of my most fun projects. Um, we always talk about it, so it's never officially off the table. So I hope to be able to make that happen again. You should mention that you do have them. I do have the, um, yeah, if you have not seen my kids' books yet, um, Little Devils Learn to Rock and Little Devils Learn to Fly. Both of those are on my site. You can check those out. Again, just super fun about these cute little devils. And, uh, and learn to rock. They find their parents' albums, so it's a uh, all you know. It's it's all of the albums from our time period. So it's just really a fun little. It was fun to paint. I don't do pop culture much at all, so it was kind of fun to to be able to do that and capture some of those. So I encourage you to check it out because Christmas is coming. Do we lose Instagram yet? So again, if you guys are on Instagram, we may lose you guys. I think in an hour, it might shut down automatically. So if you do, feel free to check us out in the other streams. But again, I appreciate you guys all giving us the time. Side note, I love his robes. 
like from, to, to paint robes is one of those, I don't know, it's a weird, fun spot, wrinkles, and being as a kind of a devilly robe, just, that's the stuff I like to paint. It's weird. Because to me, this is the stuff that always looks like a, a graphic novel. Like this kind of stuff just feels like that. It's the closest to superheroes I'm gonna do. How big is this piece? This piece is 16 by 20. <laughs> Thank you, Younger Divines. Brenda's daughter. Yes. <laughs> ah, that's how you know now. <laughs> Eduardo, it's great to work, David. Love it. Keep hey, hey, thanks, Eduardo. Appreciate you hanging out in the stream. Hanging out with us. Camera. Apologize if it has moved around. Is that? She says her birthday's coming up and could use a jellyfish. <laughs> More jellyfish. <laughs> For someone who doesn't like skeletons, she should yeah. hang around with the skeletons. I'm like, Wrap it up soon. So one day she's gonna get a jellyfish out of me. <laughs> You've already done jellyfish. You've already gotten the jellyfish. So the question is, I'm not coming to Tempe in December. No, we're done with, we retired from that show. No, we, again, I just, I don't think it's safe for us to be in a booth with, you know, a thousand people every day and, you know, taking money and stuff. It's just, you know, not safe. So we're just gonna opt out. Again, it's been an amazing place for us and it really is a bummer not to see everybody, but I think it's just for us to be safe. Yeah, a weird environment. I can't even imagine. It's weird not to be there. Weird, be weird not to be there. <laughs> yeah. So, I think I think someone already said Tucson's already already canceled. Is it? Yeah, I think someone just said that earlier. Shout out the devil. Oh, yep. So, oh, yeah, they just announced the other day. 
So yeah, no fourth out in Tucson. All right, so fourth out in Tucson is canceled, and I, I yeah, I would be surprised if Tempe happens. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Again, those shows are so closely linked together. I know the promoters, um, work together. again, the promoter for Tucson, they're, they're just fantastic. We know them very well. And, um, it's a real bummer to see them go through all this, but I know that I can't imagine if one happens that the other will still go on. Well, their website <sighs> says they're following all health guidelines and that they believe they're going to have Tempe. Yep, temp they, Tempe's still saying they believe they're going to have the show, so... All right, good for them. Yeah, I don't wish anybody ill will. I want you know, I want everybody to be safe. I just hope they are all safe again. It's definitely, I, I think it's safe to go um, as a as a vendor who has to be there and you know and has hundreds of people, thousands of people coming in the booth all weekend long. It makes me unhappy. Well, thank you. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, I, I'm super excited. Again, his robe, this kind of stuff. I'm really excited. The, the color combos and how this is coming out. Instagram's still up. All right. Well, Instagram, you're still here. Melissa says, how often do you feel like you mess up a painting? Great question. Melissa's asking, how often do I feel like I mess up a painting? Um, so there's, there's degrees of messing up. Like, do I feel like I mess up a painting? Like it's, you know, I should start over and throw it away? No, that, that doesn't happen. I just don't let that happen. Um, I take a lot of effort to make sure I don't get in situations like that. You know, cut those problems off with the past. Um, but, I mean, I've had my big fat fingers, my brushes flipped out of my hand and hit the brush. I mean, there's been some catastrophic Minor issues, um, but never one I've ever, ever I never abandoned a painting, you know, and, and not finished it. So I try and keep those those catastrophic things very limited. And again, I think for me as a professional doing this, you know, as my job, and, and I just there's a couple of things I can't afford to do. I can't sit around and have painters block, you know. I can't not feel motivated and, just, and, and not paint and just you know not fix something that's wrong. You know, there's certain things as a, as a professional I feel like I have to, I'll be, I'm obligated to do. You know, I'm incredibly lucky to have this kind of career. There's certain things that I have to do. And, and it's, it's my job and fixing things and not making catastrophic mistakes are kind of the, some of the things I make sure I try and uh, work to avoid. What about little mistakes? Like little mistakes? I've made 20 since you've been watching. <laughs> Honestly. But, there, but that's, and, 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 and that's the other flip side that I was getting to is, is there's tiny mistakes, the things they might not like, you know, I can fix 99%, I can fix 90% of them. You know, the other ones, I take a little more work to do and some things it's hand painted. You know, there's some things, I would never leave anything obviously hurting the painting or affecting it would, because I could, could never look at the painting. But um, small things and, and decisions, you know, yeah, they could be different, but I, I try not to, to be too hard on myself. It's hand painted. You know, it's happening right now. There is no reference picture for this. I am the reference. This is an existing life, you know, so I'm kind of determining what it's going to look like. If I want to have one tooth, then that's how I determine it's going to look like. Stephanie says it looks beautiful. Thank you, Stephanie. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great question because there's, there's all kinds of little mistakes. And, and the brush, sometimes the brush will be too fat, too much paint on it, you know, and, and some things might not be the way I love them. And that's kind of uh, the challenge to make it acceptable. Jody's asking, has anyone ever commissioned a Skelly Family Portrait? Jody's asking, has anyone ever commissioned a Skelly Family Portrait? Yes, many. I have probably done in the past. I don't do as many anymore. Oh. A few dozen. Yeah, a few dozen, easily. It's probably the most requested. Yeah, it's definitely the most 9% of the commissions that come to me, that's what they how, how we start. Um, I have a huge commission in, that I would get into eventually that's um, it's almost eight feet tall, and it's you know a family uh, portrait. There are Western style skeletons, and their dogs are in it too. And it's a huge piece it's going out to Texas, and that's the kind of thing that people, I, I got excited. I'm like, oh yeah, huge 
characters. That's that's fun to do, and, and stylized like you know gunslingers. That's uh, that's fun stuff. What color frames does my artwork look best in? So tough question because obviously it depends on the piece. Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, of of chunky earth tones. I think you can't really go wrong with those. And I think if, if it's a uh, a paper print, um, a black a double mat with the outside being black and a slight insert, um, so you see a little color band of a color picked from the piece. Um, I always think that looks really good too. But it's kind of tough because it is it is a each piece is different kind of thing. But I think you can't go wrong with big chunky earth tones, you know, browns, deep reds, or just black. Some teeth. Some decent dentistry at this point. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, the Sophie's Choice question. Melissa asks, What's the favorite piece you've ever painted? Oh, favorite piece ever painted. So the default answer is always, you know, it's always the newest one, you know, whatever the most recent piece is. But, um, what? What is it at this point? At this point, my favorite piece, boy, you know what, I really, because of, of recent, I love the, um, the Rum Runners Resort I just did, because I love some of the effects I captured in there, um, the water effect, um, in all, in all, uh, white enamel at the bottom of that, I'm really proud of that, I love how that came out. Um, so it's kind of tough to, to pick over that one right now. Do you think it becomes your favorite because you learned something from it? Or it I think it's, it's a mixture of, of, yeah, I think sometimes painting a long time, again, painting Last Call, yes, that's, it wants to be my favorite because I spent so much time with it, crafting it. And I think same with Remoners Resort, they're so big and I spent so much time together with that painting that you just become attached to it. Some of my small ones are, they're only a couple hours in my life, you know, and then and so there's this beautiful little thought I have and they kind of disappear and, and I lose them. And they travel somewhere else. So it's kind of like, you know, the, some of these paintings come and go. And some of the big ones I spend, you know, monumental amount of time, you know, crafting. And I guess it's, it's, it's very, always, again, it's always a very hard question to pick out what that is. Yeah. Julie asks, have you ever done artwork for tattoos? Julie's asking, ever done artwork for tattoos? Yes. Uh, my work is, I used to do tattoo commission drawings. And my work has been tattooed hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, I no longer do the tattoo drawings just because my schedule does not allow it. But again, we were just ta talking earlier. I encourage everybody, if they want to get something of mine tattooed, feel free to do it and just send me a picture so I can check it out afterwards. So I'm going to, you see me rework in some of the same areas. Basically, I'm trying to match values. Like, I want really dark inside here with the light on his back to kind of, you know, contrast. So I'm trying to put, you know, my lines over here are much lighter, much smaller. Because I don't want to, you know, lose that, that feeling of the light. Bjork's in the house. Hey, Bjork's in the house. Norway's here. Appreciate it. Time. Yeah, where you been? You know how to have other lives, people. <laughs> so we'll probably wrap it up in a few minutes. So if you have any more questions, feel free to get them in. And my Again, obviously, I appreciate all you guys being here.
hanging out with us. It's been pretty amazing to have everybody from everywhere chime in. It's awesome. And we will be doing more of these. Again, ask questions in the, in the post if you didn't get your question in now. And I'll, I'll make sure I answer everything. And as always, if you have, you know, your kids want to watch for art questions, you know, feel free to fire their questions over to me too. This is kind of family-friendly entertainment. I'll try and work on the words, the swear words a little better. Brenda's daughter asks, uh, what does the fox say? <laughs> hmm. What does the fox say? I'm not, I'm not going to say because then we'll, the rest of the day we'll be saying it. See, family friendly. I only swore once. Ah, Melissa says, um, is there a backstory to Love, Trust, and Revolver? Ah, great question. So, what was the name? It was Melissa. Melissa's asking, is there a backstory to Love, Trust, and Revolver? There is, and I, I hesitate to wanted to tell you it, because I hate making people think it's a certain way. So the, the funny thing about the, the piece is, I love how different people see it. How um, people see it as they got each other's back. People see it as um, he's done something for her, but she's not there 100. percent You know, she she has shifty motives. Again, I, I love all the the explanations. So when I did it, I my in my head there was I had. <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna tell you because I'm not gonna. You don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, what I thought. But I'll tell you right now. I wanted it to be ambiguous like that. Like I want it to be something that people could read and relate to in whatever way in their life they related. I love when you can look at something and and people can see it so differently. I mean, it's been tattooed on people. It, it's been um, stolen by. Well, same with this piece, right? There's a lot of ways to look yes, at what's happening. Yes, exactly. Just like this kind of piece here. Like I love it. There's so many different interpretations and I, I desperately don't want to give people what to think or tell them what to think i love when they can make up their own mind you know just in a way that how they see it not necessarily you know i'm trying to get you to read some massive you know crazy different story in it i, I love all their all their stories I, I love and and i relate to all of them because it was part of what i was thinking of this piece those were all part of the came into play kim asks why send the sticker presents i love them but what started them why send the sticker presents? You know, I love stickers. I think uh, I just felt like it was the right thing to do. You know, people love stickers. We love stickers and you get to share the art in that kind of way. It just became something that we enjoyed doing and people seem to really enjoy it. So it was kind of a way we could kind of give art to people and they could, you know, have it and share it and it just was the right thing to do. Would I ever do so? What's the name? That was Whitney. Whitney's asking, would I do any, ever do any um, spoofs on famous artist pieces like the Mona Lisa or something like that? Probably not. I don't like pop culture. Um, I think like we were just talking about the, the the band when I did. It was probably one of the few times I've done pop culture before. Um, I well, like like you know, um, like the Evil Knievel. Yeah, yeah, Evil Knievel. Knievel. Like that's one of the, you know that kind of stuff. I've done a few of those, and 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 I love those. I just don't do them much. I have so many stories of my own to get out that I don't I don't see me moving into one of those anytime soon. Um, Mikey over on Instagram says, what routine or method do you adhere to that ensures you paint or are creative when you feel unmotivated? Hmm. Great question. Is it Mikey? Uh, it is Mikey Goose. Mikey Goose on Instagram is asking, what kind of techniques do I use or methods to make sure I can stay painting when I'm not motivated? And it's a great question. And, and, and again, I meant to touch on it earlier, but it, it is a challenge. The key thing I think to, to staying motivated is, is just having a schedule. You gotta be disciplined. And I think for me, when I'm not motivated to do the particular art that I'm doing, doesn't mean I don't do art. You know, it, maybe it means that I do file prep or I do, um, you know, sketches on my, on my Wacom or on my, uh, on my iPad, you know, or pencil and paper. You got to find ways to stay creative and, and stay functioning um, and keep pushing. The key, I think, to, to opening up those floodgates is just to keep working because the more you work, the more you get past that. But in all honesty, if you are totally brain locked and you're like, I can't think of what to do, 
then just pick a piece you love and just copy it. Just copy it for your own technique, for your own learning. Just copy it, not to sell, not to anything else. You don't need to show it. Just paint it to stay so you're, that you're working on your techniques. You're working on your brain is working and you've taken the pressure out of what am I going to paint? How's it going to work? You've taken all the pressure out and you're just working on your skills. So you're still contributing to your art. You know, you're still building on your skills and you've taken the hard brain part out of it and then just keep doing that. Your style will come through. You'll, you'll, it, it's a positive exercise to do to get through those tough moments. Bjerk says, have you ever done a portrait, a self-portrait in that style, in your style? <laughs> Great question. I have never done a self-portrait before in my style. <laughs> or are they all self-portraits? Mm, sure. Mysterious, who knows? Deep stuff. Deep stuff. I'm gonna pull this down to here and then move over there. I'm loving his robe. Alright, let me just add this line, I'll move over there. Switch back up for the for the cam's sake. Great questions tonight, though. Excellent stuff, guys. Let's black it in some of that. Yeah, Instagrammers, since we're just testing out the first Instagram live feed. Um, thoughts on the audio? You guys hearing everything okay? Does it seem like it's not great? It's a can of... <laughs> Someone just said, is that the shipping department snoring in the background? That is the shipping department snoring in the background, if you can hear that. Answer my question. <laughs> so I guess, yeah. Please ignore that previous question. That was while we were asking. Shut vibes. <laughs> yeah, people, people on Instagram say it sounds pretty okay. Okay, good. Because the camera's kind of over there in a way, so. Eyes wide shut, that's funny. I get that. Kevin Saunders in the house. Okay, well, of course, I'm paying a devil. Saunders hurt, felt the disruption in the force. <laughs> he says the bike rider you did during the Disney residency a while back looked like it. <laughs> it was. Exactly. The single track. Yep. That actually is a self-portrait. It is a self-portrait because it was my. I was the model for that. Kevin with the answers. He's only here because of the devil. <laughs> you just felt it. Legendary over on Instagram says hello. Thank you, Legendary. Thanks for hanging out. Stoked that that stream is still up. I would show you the shipping department if we could, but that camera is locked. Is it locked? Your Instagram. Oh, yes. If you want to see the dogs, you got to go over to uh, the YouTube feed. We actually have a, a not to push the YouTube feed, but the uh, there's a puppy cam on there, and that's where we cut to the dogs throughout the feed. There's a bunch of so yeah. So <laughs> sorry to tell you Instagram people you're missing out. There's uh, four cameras on the other feed. Yeah, if you're on if you're on the other feed, you get to see four different cams, and one of them is the shipping department the entire time. They just sleep. Though. Yeah, they just they don't do much. But just so you know, you are missing out. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell you sell you anything, but Legendary you know. says love your art. Thanks, Legendary. Appreciate it. Thank you guys all for hanging out. Brett 
Brenda's daughter says bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Brenda's daughter. <laughs> when she leaves, we're going to paint jellyfish. <laughs> and here's where the jellyfish goes in this piece. All right, so a few minutes left. Any questions, get them in. But again, thank you guys all for putting up with all this ridiculousness. Nope, came here from IG to see the puppies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm sorry you came over because they're not doing anything. Who woke up? Everybody just looked at me like... <laughs> Whitney says, um, what tips or advice would you share with new artists? So Whitney's asking, what tips would I share with new artists? So the most important thing is the sketchbook rule. Keep it with you. Always be creating, no matter what you do, um, be creating at work, be creating when you have free time. You know, you gotta work, it's like a muscle. You have to work it, you have to keep, um, making art you got to keep doing that stuff staying engaged and the sketchbook is just a place for you it's just random thoughts it's random small things it's nothing serious don't worry about starting a new page or ruining a piece it's just a scrap piece of paper you carry with you that's bound so you keep it with you you just fill it up and and, and stay active the world everyone drew as a kid why does hardly anybody do it anymore when they get older because the you know it's just not built into our life so I think that the key is just find a way to make it suit you. Be serious about it for you. And don't let, think about it being anything else more to start with. Just enjoy it. Find happiness in it. Find relaxation. Let it be all that first in your life before you try and make it something it's not. Before you force it to try and be, you know, a living or, or something like that. How long have you been working on this piece? So I've been working on this piece. So um, today, all the black line work is over the last what are we, hour and a half. Yep. Hour and a half. And then um, all the gouache underneath took probably another hmm, about three or four hours. And the background took another hour and a half. So we're probably right now at about seven, eight hours all in. And it's probably another three or four left. All right, so last couple questions and then we're gonna wrap it up. Who's gonna get the last question in? So we're gonna be doing this again, and we'll add Instagram to the feed. But remember, you wanna see the dogs. <laughs> well, Whitney says, I'd love to see a mother-daughter piece, and then there's a lot of demands for more dogs. Yes, more dogs. <laughs> and uh, Whitney's asked for a, a mother-daughter piece. So I'll tell you right now, we will have a bunch of those for uh, Mother's Day next year and Father's Day. Um, we heard, we've heard the calls, so you'll probably get one before that. But definitely there'll be a bunch of them for that holiday because we've kind of have not done that before and it's been off requested now. So we're going to see if we can solve that. Uh, Miha over on uh, Facebook says just got a uh, hippo print. Hey, thanks Miha for the grabbing the hippo print. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us on the live stream. Do you want to end it with, a, I'll grab a little one? You're on right now. Yeah, I'll grab a little one. Yeah, I'm going to go over there.
Just sit down so you can see him up at the thing. Who wants to see my focus? So this is the newest member of the shipping department. He's a little sleepy right now. But again, thank everybody. He thanks you because it pays his dog food bills. Oh, so tired. So sleepy. Oh, and apologize to Miha. It's actually more like Asia. Oh, sorry, Miha. Sorry for getting that wrong. Asia with an M. Asia with an M. So maybe Asia? Asia? Asia. All right, apologize. I'm terrible with that. There's the Bunnersons, Bunny McBunnersons. He's like, let me go. I don't like this. So, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you guys all being here on the stream and hanging out with us. Um, Instagram also. Thank you guys again. We'll see you guys again soon. And hopefully, um, we'll do this again um, next week. So, keep an eye on social media. We'll post up. We're going to do it. Um, again, you'll see probably progress pics of this soon. Prints in, uh, in three or four weeks. So, again, thank you guys and have a great night.